Hello, you're watching a 5 kilobyte production, and uh, the subsidiary of that is uh, Dernert Productions, uh, and, this, and this following video is going to be very special because today I'll be showing you basically how you can make a very simple communication device to have fun with your friends or talk from one bedroom to another or so forth without having to worry about cell phone and paying minutes or cell phone service or using a, a standard landline either. It's a simple homemade two-way communication device. It's wired. It's not wireless. But um, it just uses two head old telephone handset the type where you can unscrew I'll show you it's a type where you can unscrew and you got your speaker and of course the other side is your carbon microphone um, um, now whenever you make one of these you have to use a carbon microphone that's the only way it will work um, with this simple circuit I use so what you'll need is you'll need the two telephone handsets you can get them off of old phones, either old discarded phones, or maybe your family's got a phone and you're not using it anymore. So um, you just get a couple of the old phone handsets. Um, you'll get uh, any length, uh, lo any long length of four conductor wire, uh, preferably with a. Um, with the rubber around the entire thing so it doesn't have the separate wires on mine it's got the separate wires but it's all together it does not have to be shielded which that's a plus so you just get any length of that you want you can make it really 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 long if you want a really long distance but of course then you got a lot of wire uh, just there um, or you can make it a little bit, um, you can make it short, it doesn't matter. It's whatever length of four conductor wire you need, it does not need to be shielded. You can even use a Cat5, Cat6 computer cable if you want to and just use four of its wires. <clears throat> You'll also need one AA battery, just one fresh AA battery. Um, also, you'll need an on-off switch, such as this toggle switch. Now, um, this particular phone, as you can see, actually has an extra plate. This metal piece here. This particular handset used to house a volume control. And I took the volume control out and I affixed an on off switch in place but if you don't have the special type that has the um, the removable plate which this one's removable with two allen wrenches if you don't have the type with the removable plate you could drill a hole sorry let me zoom out here you could drill a hole either there or there on the handset and install your switch in there. You just need a basic on-off toggle switch. <clears throat> okay. And um, so you'll have the battery, the two old handsets, and your toggle switch. And of course, um, soldering equipment if you want to have nice firm connections. Now if you're inexperienced in soldering, you can simply wrap the wire around the terminals to the switch. It won't be a secure connection, but if you can get it to stay, well then there you go. And if you can uh, do it that way, 
um, then this could be built by someone who has very little experience with electronics, um, who doesn't even have experience with soldering, although I recommend you do solder if you do have experience, because um, it makes a more firm connection. So, um, <clears throat> so let me let me let me draw you the schematic real quick. It's I'll show you how simple it is, and, I, and and you'll see why you'll see you'll see why I it has to use a carbon microphone. That's why I need to use this this, this style of handset. The, sorry, this old kind of handset like this with a carbon mic. Um, you, you'll see why it has to use a carbon microphone, and you'll see why even somebody without electronic experience can do it. Okay. So you'll just have a one. Oh wow, I, you can barely see that. Okay, let's use a Sharpie so we can run nice and big. So we'll have one 1 1.5 volt battery. Mm. And um, we have the toggle switch. And then I'm going to draw the carbon microphone in an, a, a certain way. The symbol. A variable resistor with a little uh, diaphragm looking thing. speaker and back to the battery and then And then back to the battery and um, use a thinner pin. So you'll see, oh sorry, so you'll see um, <clears throat> what it is for those who don't know is the carbon microphone um, will change the resistance according to the sound present at the diaphragm. Uh, you have different kinds of microphones, you have dynamic microphones which are like a speaker in reverse. You vibrate a coil within a magnet and that will produce a very small voltage. Then you have condenser microphones which uh, use a diaphragm to produce a varying capacitance to the sound. But of course then the carbon microphone produces a varying, a varying resistance to the sound. So this requires no diodes, no transistors, no vacuum tubes, no amplifier chips, none of that. It's incredibly simple. Current comes from the battery through the switch when it's turned on. This area is one hand set, this area is the other hand set. It goes through the mic, through the, uh, the speaker and the other hand set back to the battery. And then the other side, it doesn't matter which order you hook up the speaker and mic, it goes through the speaker, through the mic, and back to the battery. And whenever you talk, 
it makes a, a varying DC current flow through the speaker and back to the battery. So um, you ha you, that's why you don't need any uh, a high-tech electrons experience or anything because the simplicity is amazing. <clears throat> so now I'll show you the um, phones. Okay. So, the carbon microphone simply has two contacts, one in the outer, outer circle and the middle circle. The two contacts connect inside here. Um, I'll, I'll just show another one. The wires are kind of short. You can see on this one right here, it simply has two screw contacts so you don't even have to solder the wires there. The only part where you need where soldering experience is suggested is um, for soldering the switch and if you're not using a battery holder soldering the battery which is you have to be very careful when you do that. If you solder directly to a battery don't hold the soldering iron onto the battery for long and don't use one of those high wattage soldering guns. That's just some safety tips right there. You can see in this side, the uh, underside of the speaker unit. You can see it's made by Western Electric. Um, when you build this, I recommend you don't use this type of speaker because um, it's, it's, probably, it's not the best for putting DC into but it seems that these particular speakers don't have a problem with having a DC voltage put into them. Matter of fact, I'm going to check the resistance of it right now. As you can see, the resistance of the speaker is about 30 ohms, as opposed to the common resistance of these other kinds of speakers like this, which is 8 ohms. So you have less current going through when you got the DC. So it's less of a problem when putting DC across the speaker. And also, it's less battery drain. You can see that I simply fitted the battery inside here. And it was able to fit in there. It can't go all the way inside the, this part here unless you use a AAA battery. But it, it goes in enough that you can put the speaker inside. And also, I recommend you you leave the foam, that you put the foam, the the cotton ball that normally is found in there that you that you put it back in whenever you put this together and you can see of course also the um, wires the wire connections on the speaker are simply screwed on so the only parts where soldering I recommend is the battery and the switch and then again you can use a battery holder if if it will fit and um, wrap wires onto the switch terminals if you don't have soldering experience <clears throat> of course, you don't have any extra wiring inside this other phone unit except simply the wires go into the speaker and to the microphone. So um, it's a very simple device to build. Sorry, I need to zoom out again. It's a very simple device to build, and uh, volume is enough to hear the person clearly when you're talking. And I'll give a little example of what it sounds like to hear talking through the phone system. So I'm going to put my microphone up to the phone speaker. helping hands thing you hold the microphone up on it and we'll be able to 
hear what it sounds like to talk to the phone. Hello. I am now talking into the telephone's microphone, and you can now hear what the actual sound quality of the telephone communication device is. Uh, you can hear the sound sounds uh, quite um, interesting sounds. Uh, it just has an interesting uh, grainy kind of sound to it. It, uh, it just sounds grainy. It sounds, I don't know exactly how to describe it, it sounds kind of like an old two-way radio or something. It's pretty interesting the way it sounds, so, um, <clears throat> this is the kind of sound quality you can expect to hear from the telephone communicator. Now, I don't know, I might be overdriving the computer a little bit, but, uh, hopefully you'll be able to understand what I'm saying, and, uh, Now the carbon microphone and series with the speaker running off on only a 1.5 volt battery. I want to try holding the microphone, uh, uh, the microphone to the camera away a little bit from the uh, earpiece and see if it, it it sounds a little better. Let's see. Uh, can you still hear me? Yeah. You might be able to hear uh, my regular voice talking a little bit in the background, but you can still hear the phone voice. as to how this sounds, so anyway, it's a fun device to communicate with. I recently went to a retreat with some Christians and um, brought this phone with me, and uh, the, the guys there had a whole lot of fun uh, using this phone to talk to people. <laughs> You can, you can hear the, the person talking uh, enough to understand them well on the other end, and it's a really fun project. So, if you have any old phones lying around the house, and, um... Let me try the way of the, the sound of the other phone, just to... They both use the same kind of microphone and speaker, so they want to sound the same. I just want for you to hear both of them. You are now hearing the sound of the other telephone. So it's a it's a fun little project. So if you have any old telephones lying around the house that use these kind of hand handsets or you're going to throw some, throw one out, or you find some at an old garage sale, and, or maybe you want to have a, have a fun project to do with the kids, or maybe a science fair project for school, I highly recommend the Simple Telephone Communication Device. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy making a telephone communicator of your own for whatever you need to use it for, science fair, fun, you name it. Uh, and p please feel free to make video responses. If any of you out there make one of these of your own, you feel free to post a video response to this video of your phone communicator. Hope you enjoyed the video, and goodbye. And so... That was the telephone communication device uh, put together by me just the other day. It doesn't take that long to make. Only about half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. It's a simple project. You might even be able to make it in less time if you if you just work at it fast because it's really easy. It's it's a no-brainer. So yeah. Bye-bye.